Hello, and welcome to part two of episode seven, where we are going to talk about occlusion maps. Now, what are occlusion maps? Well, it's a technique that we're going to use in order to add depth to our texture. As you saw when I put up the screenshot, an occlusion map is basically a way to add depth to a character. What it does is it shoots out rays from each triangle, and the quicker that triangle hits another object, specifically a triangle, the darker the point it shot from becomes. In other words, triangles close together, darker. Triangles not close together, lighter. Now, it creates a splotchy effect, as you can see if you zoom in really closely, I guess, where you'll see little dots everywhere, and that's just because of how it works. But we're going to be blurring the texture in order to add a color or add depth to our, you know, color map, our diffuse. So, in order to get that, I'm going to export this character out as an OBJ, and then I'm going to import it into XNormal. I use XNormal because it's a great tool. I mean, I could use Maya's own uh, transfer maps utility, but I find it slow, and honestly, the results are kind of finicky. Sometimes it does exactly what you want, other times it doesn't. I like XNormal. It's quick, does the job, and it's free. I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to get the objects set up, and then we'll get started on making our occlusion map. Here's an example of a normal map I just baked with X normal. Oh, I'm sorry, used the wrong terms there. Here's an example of an occlusion map I just baked with X normal. Now, as you can see, it looks pretty bad. This means we still have some settings to play around with. So, we're going to get back to that. X normal generally keeps the settings you last had, and depending on the scale of the model, this could be vastly different for anything you want to use. Actually, I might need to check the scale of my model. Let's go do that. Uh, default mesh scale 200. What was I using it for? Let's go with, eh, we'll just find the right options for it. So, let's try taking down spread angle and changing bias. I generally change one thing at a time and then check it out. Now, this might be pretty slow, I'm not sure. I've never tried rendering an occlusion map while also capturing my desktop. But you see, it's almost really, really fast. Let's see if we can get rid of these sharp areas on the leg over here. If not, we can always fix that in Photoshop, so I'm not too worried. Same thing with over here. Let's see, what can we change? Let's try 125. I always go with extreme changes, that way you can see the difference if you're unsure. Oh no, we lost the nose, so let's not do that. 160 is normally what I use in X normal. Let's try a different distribution. Who keeps text messaging me? Oh, that's important. Whoa. Now, as you can see, there's these whole type areas and, and dark areas over here. This can be for any number of reasons, but generally it's because of our normals. This is actually looking pretty good, except for these really, really white areas. But again, they're supposed to be really, really white. We'll probably play around with it and see what we get. Palm's coming out really dark because it's curved. Because it looks like it's clasping, so that's that's normal. Hmm. That should be dark, so we're okay. Because that's the inner sleeve. Bottom of the sleeve. I don't like how dark this is getting, though. It's, it's much darker than I want. So let's play around with these settings until we get a, a good control of what we want. If we add uh, more rays, then it'd be less splotchy. But since we're blurring it anyways, we don't really care. Oh, that got rid of some of the blackness. 
Got rid of it over here. What the hell is playing on my iTunes? I'm gonna pause for a second. There we go. As you can see, it's still really dark. So let's make another really large change and just see how this bias is going to change and affect everything. This is the fun of occlusion maps. No matter which tool you're going to be using, you're going to be playing around with the settings a lot. In Maya, I typically use, I think, 128 rays for ray distance. I think I use between 0.8 and 1.2. That gets me a pretty good uh, system. But Maya takes so long to bake occlusion maps. You know, I think I'm going to go with the other option. I'm just going to fix these areas in Photoshop. This is for X, Y, and Z. I should add one to that. Maybe I shouldn't have. But it did get rid of those really black areas. Crap. I hate when I do something that causes me to do more work. Let's try. There we go. Cancel. There we go. Just want let's try uniform. This made it really dark though. Oh no, that's not what it did. It uh made it really polygonal. We don't want that. That almost looked like the opposite of what we wanted, so let's try this at zero. This at one. Nope. No, not at all. Let's keep those at zero. See what we get when we generate. Stop that. Go back. I wonder what cosine is going to look like. Have we tried it? And try and look for what looks best for your model when you're doing this. As a side note, in this entire process, we're still taking up significantly less time than we would do to make one render in Maya or Max. So, yay for that. Like, I'm just really just dicking around at this point. And we've gotten, I don't know, maps every few seconds. And I'm particularly beast of a machine, so it's not that. It's just because X normal's really ridiculously fast at doing this. Mm, we're getting holes again, and I'm really liking that. Hmm. Yeah. Let's also limit the ray distance. And maybe, what else could we do? I don't want to change the occluded color, even though I said don't use full black or full white. Let's go here. See how that changes everything. Again, now it's too light, so... Oh, I was setting I shouldn't have, didn't I? There. I guess this can work. I can work with this. Let's let it bake. I'll play it to our map, and I'll show you what it looks like on the character with our default colors. So you can get an idea of how this works now. These are problems we can easily fix inside of Photoshop.
I'm just being picky. And I can let you watch me bake this. It's only going to take a few more seconds, so I'm just going to pause. We'll get it set up in Photoshop, and I'll show you the render. Or not render, but I'll show you it in Maya. So we're back. I applied it. As you can see, just selected it. Jumped it over. Multiply level of 100% opacity, just so you could see what it looks like and how much it changes the model. And back in Maya, I've, I've already reloaded the texture. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. As you can see with lights, it looks really bad, but we turn those off. This looks 3D now. Remember how flat it was? This is the detail that gets added just by an occlusion map. Not bad looking. Remember how dark the hands were? Makes sense now. Let's go ahead and turn off back face calling. Ooh. Isn't this starting to look spectacular? Let's look at the face. Nice areas that are darker under the hair. Even a little shadow right here. You can see. It's coming along nice. Anyways, thanks for watching. We just made an occlusion map. Applied it to our character. And made a base color that we put over everything. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, be sure to comment or email me at valentinoistony at gmail.com or hit me up on Reddit or Twitter at ValentinoZ. Thank you very much. Next, we will be detailing, so be sure to tune in.